What is a dead giveaway that you're being cheated on? My ex would sleep with her phone under her pillow. I had an idea it was happening and would keep an eye on this guy's misspace. Then he posted one of the questionnaire things that were popular at the time. One of the questions was, who did you last kid? And his answer was my ex. Miss Space Tom had my back. Edit. A lot of you seem to think that she might have been browsing the internet. This was a time before internet. This was a time before internet was available on your phone. There was nothing to do on a phone other than call and text. Most phones also didn't screen locks with passwords or facial recognition. Anyone could get on your phone, so the best way to avoid this would be hide it or sleep with it under your pillow. So if someone does try to get it, they wake you up. Tom or Ma. Ma. When she tells you she's having dinner with her brother, while you're having dinner with her brother. So you cheated on her with her brother? Talk about reverse, uno. So you were both cheating on each other with her brother? Their co-worker sends a good night, babe. I love you text in the middle of the night. Maybe that's just the homies. You come home exhausted from work and your partner accuses you of cheating. Shh. Just realized my ex was probably cheating on me 10 years ago. My ex used to get so angry if I walked in the door and went to pee right away. I drive an hour home from work due to traffic. Having to pee is not abnormal. He made it a thing. The bathroom was right inside the door, and he would be at the other end of the house. Apparently going into the bathroom before seeing him was equivalent to me washing off the scent of my lover. Every time he accused me of anything, looking back, that's exactly what he was guilty of. Your dog vomits another woman's underwear. Good boy, just trying to help. This shit is real. Worked at Vetacock. When husband drops off sick Labrador, surgery is needed for dog's digestive tract. Wife picks up dog later that day, and we hand her a Ziploc bag containing three pieces of ladies' panties. Wife says, these aren't mine. When they accuse you of accusing them of cheating, and that has nothing to do with the conversation at all. In Italy, we have a saying that goes about first ten to sing, lay the egg. It ends being true nine to ten times. When my partner was cheating, he was really oversensitive to any implication that I didn't trust him. I'd text something like, what are you doing? And he'd get all defensive when it was really just a straight up question on my part. I had suspicions that my ex was cheating on me for months. One night she invites me out, half-hearted invite, to go drinking with her girlfriends. I decline as I wanted her to have her own friends outside of our relationship. She's all happy and humming, something she never did before. She takes a shower, then I see she's getting all doled up like I haven't seen in years. Not only that, but she's wearing her sexiest underwear, the stuff she wore to signal she was horny. I simply say, why are you wearing that? And she says, it's just what I grabbed. So I said, you know what? Give me a few minutes to get ready. I think I will go out with you tonight. She had a complete meltdown starts accusing me of accusing her of cheating, of not trusting her and hurting her feelings. Of course I was a fool and let her play me and I end up apologizing, but I knew. However, things went down and all knowledge of that kind of left my mind until years after she had left me and I remembered all that shit and other stuff. Yeah, she was cheating. I've no doubt about it. Edit. Thank you for all the upvotes and awards. Not sure how I feel about that, over a post digging up memories I honestly with, I could eternal sunshine of the spotless mind out of existence. But thank you all the same. The old oh, why don't you trust me and my other fave your insecurities are not my responsibility well, my insecurities are about you having cheated when you have clearly cheated when you have clearly cheated my dude, which is incidentally also why I do not trust you. When they become cagey about things they're normally open about. Have known a couple people who did this. Very open. Like to talk about their entire day. Would answer near any question. Then suddenly, they'd be out on a night with their friends. And the details of the night could be summed up in a couple words. Or there'd be odd gaps in the story. While they remember and try to sort through it all. When I was cheated on, that's a big thing I noticed. He seemed to stop sharing as much. There was a wall there that hadn't been. I've learned the hard way that can also mean drugs, but yeah. When he returned from a business trip, his checked bag was missing. I was picking him up from the airport like usual, and he didn't want me to go with him to file a baggage claim. Something seemed dicey, so I checked his flight number. 
He wasn't coming from Seattle like he stated, but from Massachusetts. I went in his backpack and found a stub for a whale, watching trip that confirmed it. Then I found a second cell phone. Spider sense is always reliable. Also emotionally bludgeoning you when you question an inconsistency in their story. If they cheated on someone to be with you, well, don't be shocked, is all. They are getting texts from Pizza Hut. When Little Caesars texts them to say they are hot and ready. Good night, Toyota. Hold up, I get promotional texts from Pizza Hut like once a week. The big New Yorker is back and as bold as ever. She's having migraines all the time and John Redcorn, a spiritual healer, has not been able to correct them with three to five weekly sessions over 12 years. I just need to check with my dad. You mean Dale Gribble. I love that Bobby doesn't judge and just takes in the world as it is. It doesn't occur to him that Nancy and Jock's affair is wrong or bad or should be hidden and not talked about. It's just such an obvious non-issue to him that he never brings it up. They tell you in a moment of anger, then try to pull it back. My husband has done this while drunk several times to try to get me to admit to things I haven't done. Now these comments have me second guessing. Had an ex do this a few times. Boy, was she embarrassed after the third or fourth time. She said it and I actually believed her. When my husband cheated, it was definitely the phone. He was hiding at night when he'd go to bed. Also, wouldn't ever let me go to work-related get-togethers that the other spouses would attend. So, cheating with a co-worker. Here's a fun one courtesy of my dad and his second wife. When the tire tread pattern on the fresh snow in your driveway matches the uncommon tires on your brother-in-law's new work vehicle. Edit. Got way more confused replies than I expected on this. My dad's second wife, not my mother, was having an affair with my uncle, my dad's sister's husband, his brother-in-law, and my dad figured it out after coming home early from work one night and noticing a distinctive tire width and tread pattern in his driveway that matched my uncle's work truck who had no reason for being there that night. He went inside and asked her if he made me uncle's name had been there and she acted surprised and denied it. He then mentioned the tire marks and why he recognized them and the house of cards promptly crumbled. As soon as I noticed those 265 70, 17 tracks, I knew she was a goddamn liar. You're at a party and the lead singer of a band starts singing a song about your girlfriend entitled Scotty Doesn't Know. Phonaya. When they suddenly start taking extra interest in their appearance and getting in shape by going for walks even up to 10 p.m. by the time they return and they don't answer your worried calls because they had music on with headphones. And when you ask them why they didn't answer, it's because they didn't hear the calls come in despite you having the exact same phone and know that the incoming calls cut over the music. When you catch them admitting it over a security camera to their ex while you're out of state. Damn, dude. Sorry that happened to you. When their roommates asked to meet with you privately and tell you that your GF was having someone over in their room with the music on loud the same thing she'd do when we'd get busy at her place at it. First time ever. Rip my inbox. More context. This was in 2009. We were almost four years into our relationship. I was getting ready to defend my thesis for my masters and she was applying to PhD programs. I was willing to move with her wherever she went and even had my mum help me find a nice white gold ring with a sapphire. The ex guff hated diamonds as an engagement ring. My ex's roommates told me they were torn between telling me and minding their business. I used to think one of the guys in her house was an asshole for often being rude to my ex. But it turns out it was because he couldn't play nice with her knowing she was cheating on me. Was dating a woman in a foreign country. Her roommate was a guy from Australia who I was buddies with through her. I arrived after a long flight and he said, hey bro, let's go get a beer and catch up. Over beers he told me she had been going on dates and came home very late some nights a few weeks before I got back. Risked losing his room and his friend, here, yeah, to give a bro a heads up. I'm glad they told you, you deserved better. When her roommate sell her out, that means you're doing you right. Keep doing what you're doing. They admit to you they still have feelings for a friend they had romantic history with and continue to spend alone time with and get upset that you call them an ex-reality can be whatever they want. That someone telling you they've been cheating. When they want to take a break and reevaluate things in the relationship, but in reality they just want to get piped by their ex without feeling any guilt. Funny story, 
I was in Arizona with my ex and she had this coke dealer who I was sort of friends with and I was talking to him about where I could buy a knife. I liked knives and he told me because he thought I knew and was planning to stab the guy edit. To be clear, PC a lot of people seem confused. By this, the coke dealer wasn't the guy she was cheating with. Hey, that is a funny story. Man, sorry that happened to you, but what dude? He's either a super salesman who's hitting his goals that month or has your back 100. When you come home and someone has eaten your jam. Mastique, traig, traig, mastique. Just like her hips, her jam don't lie. If they accuse you of cheating constantly. Funny how a guilty conscience projects like that. I knew a guy that was deeply insecure and ruined his marriage like this, but to the best of my knowledge, neither one of them ever cheated. Alternatively, if not accusatory, they are asking you constantly what you'd do if they cheated like some sort of litmus test or something. My ex-fiancé asked me that a ton over the course of our last year together. I never thought anything of it. I'm the type to blindly trust you 10,000 until you give me reason not to. Turns out she was cheating on me with multiple dudes. Some she was even sexting while we fell asleep spooning at night. This was back in 2018 and I'm still not okay. Oddly specific as this is how I knew the girl he was cheating with was conspicuous in absence. He told me everything about his co-workers except for this one. I thought something was going on and sadly I was right. For anyone who's reading this and either has suspicions or has been cheated on, I need you to know it's not a reflection on you. It's not your fault and you will be okay. Year 3. This is a big one. And there's also the opposite, the mentionitis. This is when they find seemingly innocent ways to bring up a suspicious someone. It's either a stress release, valve, or they're laying the soil to bring up the name in future so it won't be suspicious. Also, they say they dislike this person initially. It's a often a weak attempt to throw you off the scent. When you finally get off of work early for once after working doubles and instead of texting your boyfriend that you're on your way home, you stop and get their favorite McDonald's meal and iced coffee with your last $10 until payday as a sweet surprise. I'm home. Love you gesture and your greet. In the hallway with them coming towards you with a shocked and angry look saying you were trying to catch me doing something as you're standing there holding the food and drink in your hands like we were together six years before I got the guts to leave. It was only a couple weeks after that happened. You catch them having sex with someone else. It even worse if they don't stop. I walked in on an ex cheating on me. I stood there in a trance for a second to realize what was going on. And then when I realized we were done, I started getting naked and said, I just need a minute to get hard and then I'll join in. The guy couldn't get out fast enough and my ex just sat there bawling. I grabbed my essential stuff and walked out. Never saw or heard from her again. It even worse if they don't stop, especially if they both maintain eye contact with you. Changing passwords to devices after being okay with you, having access to them. Lack of intimacy over long stretches of time. No longer wanting to sleep next to you at all, go on dates, or do anything a couple would usually do. And my biggest flag is finding things that you're damn sure aren't yours, but they try to pass the item off like it's always been yours. I'll never have solid proof that I was cheated on, but my instincts were screaming it when our sex life went away. Then he wanted to sleep on the couch every single night. Then he started changing his passwords as my paranoia kicked in. First fight happened at this point. Next came him keeping me out of photos on purpose that he would share on his social media accounts, just in case people thought we were dating, which we were. That was when I caught him talking to someone through Swore and online. She thought he was single. Fight 2 happened then and I was in denial because he was gaslighting me so much. It escalated to him wanting to be gone every weekend to a buddy's house and I was never allowed to come along and eventually I found makeup in my car after one of those pal weekends. I don't wear makeup unless it's a special occasion, usually, and when I do wear it, it's only around my eyes so I know this didn't belong to me as it was lip gloss. Final fight and we didn't stay together. To everyone out there, it usually starts small and gets bigger over time. Trust yourself to see the signs and leave. Finding things that you're damn sure aren't yours. I was in the hospital for 10 days. When I got home, there were a bunch of empty coarse light cans on my bedside table. I don't drink beer. She ran off with Mr. Coors Light and left me and the kids, including her kids from a previous relationship. 
When you find incriminating messages and the first thing she asks you is how far you went back into the message history, she proceeds to get mad at you for violating her trust by looking at her computer even though you asked her several times calmly and patiently to be honest about the situation because you felt like you were going crazy. When the divorce process starts and she decides to call you at work and tell you you can't prove anything but I let her know I took phone pics of the conversations, she flips out. When I move out and he, her ex high school B, moves in right after, the month our divorce became final, they get married three months after, they have a child shortly after that. Anyhow, thank God it happened, because while the feeling sucked and felt unsurvivable, I dodged a big ass bullet, and my current Jeff of several years now is wonderful, and I really do feel like everything had to happen for me to end up where I ultimately needed to be. When you get a STI when you were previously clean. In my case, I'd be checked yearly when I had a pap exam done, when they used to do them yearly, clean every year. I ended up going to the doctor because I thought I had a yeast infection turned out to be by when chlamydia. We'd been together three years at that point. When your wife becomes pregnant and you had a vasectomy ten years ago. If your wife is playing second life and flirting with other guys on that platform. Crouching and sudden headshots. Aimbot. Oh yeah, you totally didn't just shoot me through that wall. Then you look at the kill cam and they shot you through a wall with a pistol. And it's also rapid firing like a submachine gun. Then they say, Jay all skill when they beat you. They stop being intimate with you and also guarding and sleeping with their phone under the pillow. I sleep with my phone under my pillow but it is just because I don't have a nightstand. My boyfriend compares me to a raccoon hoarding its possessions. So this happened a very long time ago. I had recently filed for divorce from my ex-husband and I began to date another guy. I was very naive about dating, since I hadn't dated anyone in 20 years. This guy showered me with roses, dinners, jewelry, and he liked to drink. I didn't understand anything about binge drinking. As time went on, I started to see that it was going to be a problem. When he drank, he became a different person, and one day he came home with a new cell phone for me, and he helped me set everything up. I didn't know at the time, he bought it so he could keep tabs on me. One day I was in the shower getting ready for work and he came to my house and stormed in the bathroom and ripped the shower curtain back while I was bathing and he started yelling at me about not answering the cell phone. Then he started accusing me of cheating with my male co-workers. He terrorized me one night drunk and out of his mind with a gun. That was it. I did a midnight move and I was gone. I found out that he started cheating on me when he felt he couldn't control me anymore. I should have known better. When your wife's boyfriend offers to put you up at a hotel, then tousles your hair and calls you sport or bub. When you make out with your soul and their mouth tastes exactly like your best friends are something ain't adding up here. Hold up, all up.